Yes. So let's start. Um, <clears throat> yeah, today uh, we will uh, mainly focus on uh, feature engineering. I will give you another uh, point, point of view and uh, kind of a new tutorial for, uh, for subdividing uh, any object or space and how to describe it. This is, this is the main thing, how to um, tackle some important information within your model and how to um, prepare a descriptor for, uh, for your model. And then mainly I am uh, focused on, on geometry and in, on, on vector shapes. But uh, I will just mention some uh, basic and important algorithms related to image processing, uh, because uh, this is most of the, the algorithm that you will find it uh, 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 on the market when, when, when you go to, uh, to, to study machine learning in future. So the, the machine learning algorithms mainly focusing on the data with uh, with images it uh, has has a lot of algorithms mainly focusing on this and um, and you will have uh, i think uh, a fewer amount that uh, uh, discuss uh, the um, the geometry with uh, with vector shapes so uh, and this is my main interest in uh, this course so if you remember us uh, how we started last time about mentioning this story so let's start with focusing on this uh, couple of terms orientation filtering and statistical feature this is what we will focus on and um i can say that the the the, the centroid that i usually um uh, try to highlight is how to find uh, an, an obstacle, how to find an, uh, a kind of a landmarks uh, in front of you within, within the space and how to describe it. Uh, this is the main. And in image processing, you will find the, uh, yeah, this uh, famous um, um, output of filters. Maybe you used it before in uh, Photoshop, but even in, in machine learning, there is a lot of algorithms uh, usually uh, revolve around this, especially with the with the, with the images. You are uh, within a space that you cannot define objects, so it's uh, it's only um, uh, pixels. So the face of of a man, if, of a cup, of anything, it's everything is just pixels. So you grasp it anything from its world and to put it within another world, and the other world is discretized into these pixels and uh, uh, the idea how 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 to uh, uh, make a kind of segmentation how to make a kind of uh, highlighting the the borders of shapes uh, this kind of um, uh, filters is uh, is uh, is, uh, is a point of view mainly with a computer vision and image processing functions and um, usually revolve around the idea of kernels. With the kernels, you have a kind of a small window or a small matrix. And with this small matrix, you uh, put it on every pixel with its neighbors and with some basic um, multiplication and additions at the end after this um, process, you can uh, highlight uh, some parts. So let's say, uh, uh, this matrix is maybe famous for uh, edge detection. So you move this uh, kind of uh, kernel or, or matrix around, uh, around uh, the image uh, for each pixel and you multiply uh, the weights for each pixel uh, and, uh, and its neighbors. So, this, so let's say this is the output of, <coughs> of a cross matrix just a matrix that focus on each pixel and with its rows and columns, and it uh, neglect any multiplication or addition for, uh, for uh, the other uh, diagonal neighbors. So it's an interesting thing that how, how with, uh, within this space, just uh, you, you, you can't describe what is this building or, what, or where is the sky or where is these things, but you try to highlight uh, a kind of uh, a borders. 
uh, with uh, <clears throat> there is uh, another point of view about uh, describing images or uh, with with images even with with excel sheets think about image it's not an image it's just an excel sheet rows and columns and uh, you have uh, some quantities so if you remember last time we um, we subdivided the image of uh, we can i think we can open uh, it here just to remember file open release I think it was if you remember we subdivided an image into kind of uh, subregions and within these subregions the main focus was only about the intersection where is the intersection so for, for me and the obstacle was this idea of intersection I don't care about the lines I care about where they are intersect so this is something uh, maybe related to our domain knowledge. I, I think about that this is the main interest within this. <clears throat> then after this, if you remember, we did uh, this kind of as uh, a smaller subdivisions. Just type. Yeah, this, uh, this is for this one. So then you have a kind of a smaller subdivisions and the, you uh, count also what is inside. The first one was just a bigger subdivision. For me, I was thinking that maybe this helps to define an orientation. So then I look at everything within the same orientation. Think about it like uh, if you have a lot of faces of, uh, of humans and you, you need to calibrate it that all of the faces are uh, in front of the camera. No one is rotating right or left. So this was the, the, the main uh, start. Then we go after fixing the rotation, we started to um, um, uh, describe something within these regions. So last time, we were discussing the intersection, how many intersection within these subregions. And with this, if you have multiple image, the, all, all of them have uh, the same order, then your uh, feature vector will be how many, how many, how many in, uh, in a cyclical uh, or in a serious way. So this is also another idea about uh, in, in image processing. If you um, uh, shift it to this um, to machine learning in future, you will find uh, this idea: how to describe the the, the 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 flow of vector within an image. And this uh, this idea is mainly uh, let's say re rely on let's say if there is a brightness and contrast. So where is the highest uh, brightness? So the pixels look into the neighbors of the highest brightness or lowest brightness. So this makes a kind of a, a, a vector field within this. Then uh, you also subdivide uh, or partition or uh, into subregions these, uh, these images. And you start to count, let's say, how many within these regions uh, are uh, oriented up how many pixels oriented right, how many pixels oriented down. So at the end, you can describe an image to say these kind of features. So that the feature, you, you don't describe, let's say the colors, maybe you describe only the, <clears throat> the where is the highest point and where is the lowest point. And this is called a, a histogram. So with this, you can, here you say, uh, you, you, you know, uh, what is the the highest and lowest uh, orientation of vectors within and within a patch? And with this, you describe this one. And you can also highlight uh, that the the highest parts within image that has uh, a higher values for some uh, orientations. With this, you can get something called key points. So they are the most important points that has 
the the highest uh, uh, shift within let's say within the field of vectors and also remember also vectors you can think about it like lines so the the line itself can be or the segment of line can, you can see it as a vector so it's a, it's a where the intersection between different kind of geometrical lines or a field of vectors you can use these uh, kind of things so maybe in your uh, mobile when you go to let's say make a panorama or uh, in some algorithms how to get a similar points on different images and you need to to stitch them or to to um, uh, to, to um, um, extend them together so you have to uh, to have a way to analyze and to get the specific uh, called the key points so here's this the algorithm the yeah the, the famous um, algorithms for histogram orientation you subdivide an image into sub uh, sub regions for each region you have these kind of uh, vectors and then you start to count let's say uh, you have a 360 degree vectors so maybe i can uh, look only about uh, let's say four regions from 0 to 90 so then how many vectors orienting to 0 to 90 how many vectors orienting from 90 to 180 and so on and then you can build this kind of histogram like this as a visualization or as like this this is the same okay just you count how many uh, in each direction so let's go to the same idea, but we will not deal with uh, with, uh, with images. We will deal with the uh, vector uh, vector shapes. Yeah, the same couple of uh, of images uh, uh, from Philip. And as usual, if you if you have any problem, look into this uh, kind of clusters. If you have any question, ask me uh, online or, or here. So uh, I started with these uh, patches, and within these patches, I tried to just a cluster because all of these inputs are the same. They are one list, so I don't know which of these lines relate to others. So this is just to to cluster it into a kind of a sub patches of different images, and this is just mainly to um, to build. Uh, this was for the uh, intersection, and with this intersection, I just I wanted to also to fix the rotation. This is the the same part as before. Nothing new for this part until here but the only thing that i i, I focused on is um is try to find it yeah okay you have a you have an uh, you have these lines i just extruded it You extrude the polylines into Z, you shift it into mesh, and with mesh you make join. And uh, as I said before, this idea of meshes is to use this uh, uh, searching for the closest point of a mesh. So you have lots of points within this space, and uh, every one of it try to find what is the, the closest point okay for this object and then between these both i construct a vector and this is the this is my interest in this uh, in this tutorial and how these vectors 
Now these vectors are subdivided into patches. Okay, this takes a little bit of time just to to see. Um, so, uh, do you can I say that feature engineering is somehow the meaning extraction? Not the mean, no. The word meaning is is too much. No, it's just a, you highlight the the most uniqueness parts within your uh, within your data, and the, to extract these important parts or highlight it is usually starting from reading the uh, similarities. So you put everything within your space or your data on a um, um on a space that you are able to compare then you just extract the the most uh, different or the most regular so meaning is never there in machine learning uh, no way to say meaning <laughs> the word meaning you have the meaning you know the meaning but uh so within the let's say the domain knowledge you know, you work on on urban. You work on in in, in, in uh, let's say on airflow on any of these. It's just the quantities, but you know which one is is um, you can focus on. I just I will. I just I will. I open I reopen the grasshopper. So I try to, uh, this was maybe too much, too much subdivision for these images to the memory to, uh, to visualize it. So here I subdivided, ah, uh, because I already subdivided the image in the first step into yeah, several parts, sorry. Okay, so let's do the, 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 same, uh, the same idea just again. So the, fir the first part, I just I uh, subdivided uh, the whole image into kind of, uh, you, the first I said, you call it a block, so two sub blocks. So let's say just for the process. So this is four blocks. And with each of these four blocks, I subdivided into, let's say, another four. So there, there is, four by four within the big patches. And then I will count for each of these patch, for this one, I can give a description for how many rotations within this patch. So to divide this, how many rotations in a serious way, I subdivided it into another four then I start to visualize, you have these center points. You try to find each point, try to find the closest point on your model. Then you have a couple of things. So you can, uh, you can measure, let's say, then I will be interested, let's say, in this tutorial only on the average. So you have many, many uh, vectors. So let's say line. So actually, it should be like this. Okay. And this is your model. Okay, and I'm interested with uh, the average within a patch. Okay, so the average, let's say, for the first patch is, let's say, this one. So within the first patch, let's say, I am interested only with the average. Okay. 
Uh, and this idea of average is uh, simple. You have uh, all of the X's, all of the Y, all of the Z. You just uh, make the average. It's uh, an easy concept. And uh, within this average, I just I calculate the rotations, so the angles. So I can get. You see here this list, it's uh, the zero patch is this part, I mean this. All of this, so there is the first patch is divided four by four. So it's 16 from zero to 15. And the, Within each of these subregions, I get the, the rotation of these vectors. So now here it is. Just I this is just I changed it into uh, degrees. It was in radians. Then. This is just to visualize just a coloring of this average for each of these uh, parts. So if we just uh, added more of these subdivisions, let's say 10, and we visualize this, was like this. So by that, by that I, I can say that I built a, a kind of a, a histogram for each of these uh, uh, subregions. And then the next step that uh, the next step is the histogram. So now I, I have a, a lot of values for uh, for rotations, and I try to test each of these uh, each of these rotations. Is it within a specific domain or not? So I divided the domain of angles, which is from zero to 360 degrees. So this is the range. And I will try to divide this, hist this histogram only in, uh, into seven. So let's say in this part, when I say that all of these rotations, they are a lot, but I will only divide the space of, of these into seven or eight or nine, or like this. Here you have only uh, eight. So anything within around this uh, zero degrees will be counted how many vectors within this part. Just different visualization for the same idea. How many around the zero degree? How many around, let's say, this is the next subdivision, let's say from zero. Uh, to let's say 45, from 45 to 90, any vectors within this uh, re uh, within this domain. So this is maybe one of the components. You test, you have a domain. So here I divide, this is the domain from zero degree to 51 degree, from 51 degree to 103 and so on until the 360. And you have for each of these patches, you have these rotations of vectors. And you test, is it within this domain or not? And according to this, yeah, I get a kind of, uh, for each of these, uh, each of these angles, 
after this one, this tells you the index. It tells you yeah, this kind of, uh, uh, of angle is within uh, the domain number three. This angle is within domain number five. This is, and so on. And then I count it. So here, this cluster, just to count how many vectors are within one, how many vectors are within domain two, and so on. And with this, I have this, I can say it's an MEG2 vector. It's the same idea of the bag of words. With the bag of words, if you remember, you have a, a text, you have some uh, important words, and, it, uh, and this, these words, you count how many this word is represented within your data. And at the end, you uh, describe the full text with, within, with only one vector with a couple of words. So this is the same. Here represent from zero to six, these seven divisions of the 360 degrees. Here I say there is in the first patch, okay, we can, I think we can do it like this. I think this, is, this was the first element. I think it's better to see it like this. So let's say the first image has from zero to let's say 100 patch. I see, I think maybe 100. Okay, so you have 100 patch, and for each patch, you have this kind of counting. So at the end, if you want to represent the image, maybe I didn't do this in this part. So then I need just to make a shift, shift these paths, one. Then I have, let's say, 700. You have 10 images and you have 700 uh, feature vector. And uh, these dimensions is uh, divided into, let's say you have sub patches and it's related to uh, the, how you will subdivide the rotations of this. And this can be another representation. It's the same idea of bar. So here, within this patch, there is zero degrees for all of this rotation. There is no rotation like this, but there is, let's say, 100 uh, around this, uh, this, uh, this rotation. Of course, here, I do not represent this like this, okay? So you have, for this patch, for this 100, this kind of rotations, you counted this 100 100 here within this rotation and you and you uh, join all of these to describe one image. So this is uh, a point of view for how to describe, uh, so this, this idea is actually is just inspired from, from this, uh, this idea of histogram uh, for these images. And it's a, a very basic idea and fundamental. You can find it in a lot of applications. You are, you are just using it within your hands. And just the next example. is this just another point of view uh, we do not tackle the, the the images in this course at all from one side the uh, already grasshopper yeah it doesn't support uh, especially with memory um, to deal with a lot of uh, these uh, images but let's say how just to look at the same idea but with a different point of view 
So we have uh, an image. Uh, this is called an image sampler within Grasshopper. Image sampler. And you just distribute points around this. So this is a 300 pixel by 300 pixel. So think about 300 pixel, like 300 point by 300 points. And here you distribute, let's say, every, uh, uh, there is a 30 subdivision in X and Y, and the size between, uh, and the, the size between them are 10. So this is a 300 by 300. And this is one of the geometrical uh, ideas is you have, let's say this, uh, these points, grid points, then you evalu evaluate when the, the output of this is if the, the value is say zero and one, you can double click on this uh, image sampler. Here you select what would you like to, to see, maybe the, the, the channels of red, green, and the blue, or the brightness. So for me, I just, I clicked on the brightness. I'm interested only with what's high or low. And then uh, this is just for visualization that these points, I just, I move it up or down just to visualize the difference. So you can look at images like surfaces. And within this surface, you let's say maybe you are interested to evaluate uh, the rotations of vectors. So you have a kind of rotations for this tangent plane, okay? And with this, you can maybe compute something related uh, for me here. I just I use this, uh, the average of the X, Y, and Z, the norm and the normal, which is the perpendicular on the surface on specific points. So here's another idea. And with this, you can, okay, here is, let's say, it's like this. You have these kind of different rotations. And this just to uh, to visualize it. Here is the top. Um, just to show you, if I moved these points of grid around the images, so this is. So maybe your model is a surface. Maybe you wanted to uh, use this uh, self-organizing map and you want to describe your surface model as a rotation of vectors, not as a points distributed on the object itself. All what we are doing is, is, is give you a different kind of techniques to describe what you have. Describe your uh, lines and you are only focusing on intersection describing lines, but you are not lo uh, looking into intersection, you are looking on the directions about the, the, the closest. Uh, describe your 3D model by its vertices. So all of these is uh, describe uh, something like this uh, cellular automaton, but just a kind of a binary that there is a zero and one. Describe your text as counting how many points. So this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, feature engineering principles and within your domain. And we are, as an architect, we, we this kind of uh, ideas about um, explaining a surface or, or geometrical thing, I think we, we can tackle these things. We don't need uh, uh, basic algorithms uh, like, uh, like other in the computer vision. You can, you can build your own uh, logical uh, de descriptors. Of this is of these spaces. Um, so this is just another uh, point of view. Last, okay. This I didn't uh, send it. I didn't send this file. 
because it's only uh, it's only supported on Windows, not on Mac. Maybe I can fix this in the next weeks. Uh, these two, these two uh, computer vision algorithms called, uh, say, uh, Surf, uh, Surf uh, speed up robust feature. This is maybe the abbreviation of it. So how to get the most important points because within these points you can uh, crop and say, this is one of my important feature that I will look at on, on, on my model. So this is one and gives you this orientation and also with the histogram. So I, I have this in, uh, in Grasshopper. Uh, yeah, if I uh, fix it, I will uh, send the, uh, for you the, the, the new update. So this can, uh, so th this is an, just I imported the image. So we have the image. And the output of, uh, of this, uh, of these uh, components, let's say with this, you select only the, oh, Okay, so the screen is uh, okay. Sorry for it cannot move in, in terms of memory. So this uh, just highlights the interesting point, so, and you see here that let's say it avoided the lake. It's uh, almost the same distribution of uh, of these points. There is no ups and downs, and it only uh, tackle the edges, and it tells you the orientation of these edges. And this is basically just how to compute. You have each pixel, and you look at the neighbors x and y, and according to what is high or low, it can define the orientation of um, of these vectors. And maybe the other one is with this uh, uh, histogram orientation. It's uh, the same idea that what we did with the feature vector, but this based on, on, on uh, image processing. Yeah. So, okay. So, anyway. So, this is the first part is with, uh, with these uh, files. If you have, uh, Question about any about these ideas that we described here. About how to look at vectors on the surfaces. Which an image. Or counting vectors for each domain. And you can uh, apply the apply this if you have in, uh, uh, it doesn't matter, is it uh, a sketch of a floor plan or a, or a landscape or, or anything or zoning. It's, you have the same idea. So you can, later you can say, uh, you have entrance and reception and so on. This has a value. This is, has a different value. So these kind of things within a, within your space describe uh, topography. So there is a one surface has different heights. If you are in the entrance, let's say you are in the first level, which is the first zone, you have a different zone and let's say the reception and you are. Uh, you will count uh, the orientations uh, not only within the range, also within the the heights. So the Z is important to me. Okay, going from a space to space, from a, a level of surface of entrance to a level of surface of uh, of uh, reception, and uh, the vector where I goes. This can describe and and. Uh, an image of a floor plan, but with the examples, you can imagine your your problem uh, as you like. And with this, now we uh, almost yeah, finished. Maybe in the next two times, 
the next two times will be here in uh, in Hungerberg, and uh, everyone will bring his laptop or her laptop and open your files, and I will following up with you uh, every of your projects. And from the next time, I'll tell you. And the third, I think it's uh, say now. Today is a two. This is nine and sixteen of May, and twenty third of May you submit, and I will tell you how to submit. 